everybody. It is John the Comic Guy, and today I want to share some more awesome trades that I got. But before I do so, I want to also once again show some robots because Steve Ramsey of uh, Steve Ramsey 6562 asked about robots in my collection. Now, this is one of my favorites, and this goes back to probably in the 90s. Uh, my buddy, Howard Bender, we both lived in Toms River, New Jersey, and he goes, hey, I'm at the Route 70 flea market, which, by the way, is no longer there. Um, I think they put up condos, but he goes, hey, John, I'm at the Route 70 flea market right now, and I see a set of Rock'em Sock'em robots. Are you interested? For, but I think, 15 or $20. These are in amazing condition. So Rock'em Sock'em robots, they were uh, manufactured in 1966 by Marks toys um, and I go Howard please pick them up and I'll drop by our house in a couple of minutes with the money and he did it so look at these you know every so often we play them I think one of the arms now got a little wonky because uh, I think it was like a Thanksgiving one day me and some family members were playing with them and it, it made one of the arms a little wonky but other than that they look great Rock'em Sock'em Robots from 1966 from Mark's Toys Steve Ramsey, thank you again for asking that, and uh, every so often I'll continue to show you some toys, so uh, those are among my favorites. Now, and actually, before I go through the trades of from uh, Michael Kratney and I, I want to give another shout out to Josh Travis. Josh Travis is an, oh, one of the local friends I have here. He and I do a lot of trading. Um, and usually these are the lower end trading, like some dollar books or three for ten dollar books, things like that. But he commented on my trading video, and his words are, "Hey, trading has taken my collection to the to, to great heights, not just comics, but records, toys, etc., cards. Um, I'll trade almost anything if the deal is right." Now that is the mindset. And by the way. Just uh, FYI, last time Josh was over, he mentioned that he was probably going to start a, uh, a YouTube channel. So once I get that information, I would say let's support the man. He is great. He's a great guy. He, I've known him for several years, and we've done a lot of trading together. Uh, matter of fact, I've traded with him a lot of records, too. So um, be on the lookout. You know, if you come here on Black Friday, you, you probably met him. Uh, he's just a great guy. So... Um, the last time he was here, we traded a couple of, uh, uh, some stacks of books, right? That's how we typically do it. Again, these are more bulk trades, more so than high-end trades. But every so often, I get a book that I want for my personal collection as opposed to just st sticking back in inventory. This is one of the books uh, that I wanted to give a shout-out to. It's a lower, uh, it's, it's lower grade. Um, I would probably say maybe a 3.5, but... I do like the Power Man series. I'm not sure if you guys do, but uh, I enjoy that. So Luke Cage, Hero for Hire, uh, Power Man series, I do enjoy it. So uh, Josh, uh, as you know, and he's been here many, many times, not only for my sales, not only to come by, uh, uh, but often to do trading. And um, he'll, he'll let me know, hey, John, uh, around noon uh, on Friday, can I come by and do a little trading? And I, I pretty much always say, if you can come over, I'm available. So uh, this is one of the keepers from the uh, most recent trade I did with Josh. So Josh, thank you so much. And everybody, be on the lookout because he's going to have his YouTube channel. So uh, we want to support. We want to support our friends. And uh, and obviously, uh, I'm sure he has some amazing finds, both with toys, records, cards, and certainly comic books. Now, with Michael Karatney, he came by the other day and he ended up take, uh, taking some of my $10 books, but mostly three for $10 books. So uh, again, this wasn't a very high-end trade, but one of these books you're going to see, I mean, we, we ultimately traded uh, several hundreds of dollars worth of books uh, for the handful that I decided to keep. Ghost Rider number six. Again, this is a medium grade. I would say it's probably about uh, a mid-grade 5.5, 6.0. But uh, I needed it and uh, was happy to kind of uh, uh, snag it from my collection. Ghost Rider number six. You know, again, I'm never, uh, I'm really not a massive Ghost Rider fan, but passively very similar to uh, Sergeant Fury uh, and his Howling Commandos. I, I'm sort of passive with those titles, but I'm sort of getting a pretty decent collection 
passively, and I'll certainly keep them all day with uh, with trades. The next book is an upgrade for me. So this is the book I'm upgrading, and I put the other one in my um, ten dollar or over bin to trade because this is actually quite a nice book. Hulk number one fourteen, and I'm gonna. I think I may do an episode on this because you know, have you noticed? Sandman covers are really cool. Ah, I like them. I was never a massive Sandman fan per se, but his covers just are so dynamic. But this was a nice upgrade for me. So again, I think this is a 5.5, 6.0. The other one I had had uh, uh, like some pen marks or ink marks on the uh, Comics Code stamp. So this one is centered a little nicer, and this one doesn't have the, uh, the ink marks on there. But uh, I like it. Incredible Hulk 114. As you guys know, I'm a Hulk fan. The next comic um, is what I would consider a speculator book. I've had several copies of it. This is probably among the nicer condition ones. And again, it's not a particularly hard book to come by. But you're going to see, certainly would be, in my world, considered a speculator book. Dazzler number one. Right, especially when Taylor Swift was rumored to be playing Dazzler. That never panned out, but you never know, right? So I decided to press it. It's a, it is a 9.0. So again, this is a mid to high grade copy. Um, it looks great. I decided to keep it for my own collection for now. Um, you know, this is right in the, uh, the, uh, the era that I'm starting to act collect and this is not a title I would ever actively seek out but passively in a trade why not I, I, I'm gonna keep it for now and uh, I think this is a nice copy and everybody let's uh, light some candles and say go Taylor go Taylor come on play Dazzler so we'll see maybe we'll get lucky do you have copies of that let me know if you keep cap copies of this is this one of your speculation books I would probably say this is a low speculation book but you know, they have Taylor Swift versions of this comic, uh, of, of, of this cover. So, uh, you know, when you're talking about homage covers, I don't know. Speculation for now. It didn't cost me anything other than trades. Now, for my final book, the final book I got is actually a duplicate for me. I already have a copy. Actually, I have a copy in slightly higher grade, but I'm going to keep it. And I know you're looking saying, John. I have boxes of these. However, as you're going to see with the pictures I'm going to put, this is the Blue Lizard uh, variant. Um, and I believe this already has a name and a new owner to it. Uh, but I kept this. And a matter of fact, Michael brought this because he knew I wanted another copy because you know Ryan Soupy, right? Right. I've, uh, I've interviewed him. He may be co-hosting with me, but... Ryan Soupy was was uh, interested in this book, and we're going to do a trade. Um, and if the timing is right, I'm going to post that video of the trade that I get from him after I, I press his book. Ryan was able to come over. Uh, it was a rainy day, so he brought the book to trade with me. We did our trade, and as I show you this, um, I put it in a comic skin. So let me just take this moment to thank our sponsor, Comic Skin. Um, Comic Skin's uh, Mark from Comic Skin is given 5% off. If you at checkout uh, on coupon code, type in John the Comic Guy 5. John the Comic Guy 5. You get 5% off the singles, the five packs, and the 10 packs. So, uh, Mark, thank you so much for being our sponsor, and I appreciate the 5% off. So, uh, I put Ryan's book in this Comic Skin after I hydrated and pressed it. So at the end of this video, if you want to hang out uh, and watch the pressing process, uh, I showed you some before and after, and again, I kind of catch this sometimes midway, so I hydrated it. You can still see a lot of the defects after I hydrated it, and I started to at least record it at that point, and then I showed you the after. So that's just a short, short piece, but I hope you stick around after this to see my, my efforts in actually hydrating and pressing the book. So this was the book that I traded Ryan for. Now, I would say Ryan definitely got the better end of this deal because his was that Blue 
Lizard variant 9.6. I am very happy about this though. And you know, again, I'm not so picky on that we're always going dollar for dollar. Sometimes I want a book that I don't have. X-Men 266. Um, again, this is a great book. And, and for me, I like this. I have so many copies of that Spider-Man number one, including a higher grade, a 9.8 grade of the blue lizard variant. So I did not have this. And a couple of things worth noting, and you're going to see it in the video. So again, stick around and watch that pressing video. But there are damage on the spine. There's actually about a half inch tear on the spine at the top. And right here, um, there's like a little fold. Um, I would say, yeah, like kind of right there. And it actually slightly breaks the color. Um, other than that, this book is really, really pretty sweet. And, and it certainly shows very well. But because of that, I kind of was looking, um, I was looking in the guide, uh, the CGC grading guide, and it really says that the, the, the high for this would be a 7.5, maybe an 8.0, but um, I'm dropping it to a 7.5 just because it has the multiple uh, multiple defects. So if you look at it dollar for dollar, really that blue variant lizard is worth more. But again, I made a friend happy. I'm good with it. I don't need to you know, be so obsessive about making trades equal. Uh, that, that's not what I'm all about. And, and this is a great book. So um, on that, I want to thank you so much for joining me. If you can stay for the next five minutes and watch how I pressed it and see the before and after of this book. Um, but if not, I want to thank you so much for joining me. And I would ask that you please hit the subscribe button. And I will talk to you soon. Stay tuned for the pressing. Okay, so let's try to document the results of this pressing. So I just got a copy of this from Ryan Soupy today. As you can see, it's actually not bad. I'd say right now it's probably like a 7.5. The key really is look at that spine. The spine is pretty rough, but I just hydrated it. Yeah, you could see the spine right there. I just hydrated it, and I am heating up. I'm heating up the press right now. Again, once it hits 135, it'll actually be about 174, 175 degrees. Then I'm going to sandwich it in here. We have the, uh, the, um, the rosin paper in between backer boards, magazine boards. And I'm going to press it five minutes with the heat on. And then tomorrow morning, we're going to see the results. So let's uh, give it a press right now. Okay, I just literally pulled it out of the press. It has been in the press for about 12 or 13 hours. Now, it came out amazing. The corners look really good. I'm going to try to pull back a little bit because if you remember, see, there's a couple of dings there. But you saw how yesterday it was a lot rougher there. That looks really good. I'm, I'm very pleased. Now, uh, I saw, I caught that tear. There's about a half inch tear up there. So, and there's a little, a little ding over there. And there was a slight fold here. It doesn't quite, it, it's a, uh, right there you go. You can't, you kind of catch it. There's a slight color break. Slight. So I would say, as I assessed yesterday after the press, it, it, it's about a 7.5, I think. Um, it, allows, it allows some of those defects, but overall, this really came out nice. So I think, though it's a 7.5, it presents very, very well.